All right, welcome back to Newsline tonight. And a mother's joy begins when she senses the breath of life stirring inside her. Now the tiny heartbeat and the kicks are all a reminder of one of life's fulfillment. For many mothers, however, the waiting period, the pain of not being able to have a child, could also result in frustration, anger and despair. But not so for Inkiru and Ifai. When the couple agreed to tie the knots, they planned to have just two or three children at the most. But 13 years down the line, the waiting game came to an end, but in grand style. And Mom So Damien Dati has this report for us. Usually, the National Hospital of Abuja is a very busy place, owing to the nature of cases being handled here. However, an unusual assembly consisting of the high and mighty breezing in and out of the hospital says something is fishy. Uh, here is a woman who is 13 years into marriage and uh, had seen two miscarriages, had almost completely lost hope, not only in uh, her ability to, uh, to have a baby, but has almost lost hope in life. Somehow, uh, science and uh, definitely through the uh, will of God assisted her. Some very beautiful, wonderful staff of the National Hospital were able to moni monitor her all through her stages of pregnancy to the stage where they feel that the babies can be safely delivered. Actually, she was counseled to get up to 29 weeks of gestation. But however, by the time she got to 29 weeks, or close, very close monitoring, uh, the doctors decided to push her one week further to make the children stronger, safer, so that the lungs would be able to really be a bit matured to really withstand the stress of uh, coming into life. That additional one week really made a significant difference uh, in the survival rate of these children. Considering... Among the early knocks on the door of Inkiruka was the first lady of the Federation whose hands of support came through the Minister of Women Affairs. Delivery of a woman that has waited, God compensated her. He came here myself and the Chairman of Women Affairs, House of Rep. So I'm happy for the woman. We're here to support her because the First Lady, Senator uh, um, Oluremi Tinubu, asked us to come here. And normally this is our duty. It's within my purview to take care of women and babies. And we will continue looking, taking care of these children even in the next one year. That is what I'm assuring you. For Ifai Wachiku, who met and married in Kiruka precious 13 years ago, his plan was to raise a few number of children. But God's plan is superior. Like every other couple, we were expecting that our children, we will have our children immediately. But one year, two years, three years, ah, they were not forthcoming. We did all we could as human beings, going to hospitals, spending money, we gather and we continued till at the point we were like, we are tired because it was taking all we were gathering since then till when God bless us, 13 years. I was expecting, Lord, let it just be two or one or three. 13 years after, the couple got a shock, have a dozen babies at once. Ah, <sighs> Actually, it was um, a news that almost took my breath because I never think of that. At a point, I was asking God, let me just be a father. He scanned again. And now told me that he's seen five babies. Like this, how will I carry five? Sincerely speaking, it was not easy. After bringing out five children, I was overhearing it's like there's another one. That's what made them six. That morning sickness as some women vomit, I vomit, I will be vomiting till blood will be coming out. It started affecting my breath. God took me through. While in fine, the father is a pastor. The mother, 46-year-old in Kiruka, a HND holder in mass communication, has never had a formal job since graduation and had to resort to petty trading to support the husband. Presently, I'm not working and I need a good job. 
to really take care of the children and take care of those that will be caring for them. Because personal, uh, one person cannot do it. Now, with an addition of six mouths to feed and only a room to live in, another miracle may just have to happen for this couple. We still need um, a place that is a bit comfortable for us so that we can have um, a befitting place for them to, to stay. The encouragement I will be giving to everyone out there that still believe in God, number one is patient. And that patient will be anchored on God. And he never fails. Absolutely, absolutely. And did you hear uh, in Kiru when she said she, after the fifth baby, uh, she, it's like there's another one. Not one, not two, not three, but six. Amazing and incredible. Uh, we want to thank our First Lady for leading, uh, you know, opening the, the doors of support. And please keep the support coming in for the couple. Again, the lesson to learn uh, from here is that patience, it's always a virtue. We're still talking about children, and the beauty of children is their adaptive ability. Now, once they're born, they listen and learn from the parents. But some children are born with exceptional creative ability. They exhibit exceptional intellectual capacity, curiosity, and academic aptitude. Now, Abdul Jalil Ibrahim, in our next report, is in this class. His intelligence quotient is considered unusual. Let's join Adamu Sunday for more on this. In this small village of Baikin Kasua in Kagaruko local government area of Kaduna State comes a six years old Abdujalit Ibrahim. Abdujalit was born with natural abilities well above the average of his age, to the surprise of many. I want to be a teacher. Why do you want to be a teacher? Because I want to assist the nation. The exceptional ability of this young boy who wants to be a teacher inspired me to drive from Kaduna to Kagaruko local government area to meet and interface with him in school. Unfortunately, when I got there, I was told he now goes to school in Zaria. He is accommodating and he's friendly to his other pupils. And he usually assists in helping other pupils in times of assignments and even classwork. So I interviewed him personally and I discovered that he is an extraordinary gifted child. I said to him, we are going to encourage him. Ibrahim, the father of Abdujalit, who lost his teaching job a few months after the gifted child was born, says he first noticed his son's natural ability in the way he learns fast and decided to support and encourage him. I used to, I used to construct a house sentence by saying, Zantepika uh, do gobe. Now I will ask him, tell me, translate it in Hausa in English. He will say, I will go to Kaduna tomorrow. Zantepika no gobe. Now the child will, will translate it in English. I will go to Kano tomorrow. Okay, if I ask him to write, he will write. If I ask him to translate that English, that sentence in Hausa, he is going to translate it in Hausa again. That is why through that, I understand my child is a gifted child. Out of curiosity, I drove down to his new school in Zaria to have one-on-one -on -one interaction with a young lad with admirable qualities. This is the school where... Abdujalit Ibrahim is currently pursuing his dream of becoming a teacher. The gifted child who has since acclimatized with his new environment is often curious and attentive in the classroom amongst other learners, making meaningful contributions to satisfy his test for knowledge. Abdujalit, I need you to give me a sentence also. What is it now? I know Sanam of Venkin, Ejiman, Bowman, Sculpture, Etisi. Oh, I know Sanam of Bobbison, I'm a plus or think Ejiman, Bowman, Sculpture, Etisi. What is it, Bruno? Bruno is a red that is in place of an age, I you with the Haitian eat. What is it, Bruno? I'm a very sad, you know, Ejiman, come see go Etisi. An advice is that the first and 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 the an adjective is said that an adjective is said that the first on the first and a plan each block to it is. What is it on A conjunction gen set and group of words together and but all it is. What is an interjection? An interjection this is text, special than emotional feeling each or high it is. What is 
A computer is a machine that can calculate and do or a computer system is an electronic device that has the following parts or features. Number one, the monitor. Number two, the system unit or CPU. Number three, the keyboard. Number four, the mouse. These parts are connected together to make our computer system. What I noticed from him that he is a good boy, well talented. Alhamdulillah, he is doing well in the class. According to educationist, children with high IQ become more talented when they are supported and encouraged to use their natural gifts to learn, concentrate, and practice. If Abdul Jalit is properly guided, no doubt he will be a force to reckon with in the near future. Indeed, quite admirable and, of course, a force to reckon with. All right. Um... Seasoning cube can ruin your meal, money, and confidence. For a tasty meal, do not compromise. Choose gold. Use Terra Gold for the rich, consistent taste your loved ones crave for. Good for soups, stews, and jollof. Terra Gold. One cube, endless possibilities. Welcome back to Newsline. Now, to sustain its commitment to corporate social responsibility to impact lives in host communities, Total Energy's NNPCL partnership inaugurates key projects of its OML 58 in Obite, Ogba Egbe, Mandoni, local government area of River State, and Dibabari, Sia Doma, Nweke, witnessed the ceremony. I take this building in the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. The projects inaugurated include Obite Guest House and Holiday Resort, Obite Community Housing Units, modern market stalls, renovated classroom blocks, staff quarters and lodge for core members at Community Secondary School Obagi. Others are comprehensive high school staff quarters and 8-meter road in Oboburu community. Deputy Managing Director, Joint Venture Assets Total Energies EP Nigeria Limited, represented by the General Manager Community Affairs and Development, God's Power Wanchuku, hopes that the projects will address specific needs in the communities and improve their standards of living. It is very important to know that these projects we are carefully nominated by the communities where they are cited and they are all executed using the community MOU development project envelope. It is a testament to sustaining this successful partnership with the host communities. Group Managing Director NNPC Nigeria Limited, represented by Deputy Manager External Relations Bumi Lawson, commended the communities for ensuring that the projects were executed as planned. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPC Limited, and our partner Total Energies are honored to have had the opportunity to contribute to these initiatives. But more importantly, NNPC Limited is truly inspired by the dedication and hard work of everyone involved in bringing this project to fruition. The CDC Chairman of OBT, Past Ike Chuku Egba, expressed gratitude to Total Energies EP Nigeria Limited and its partners for making the project a reality. On behalf of OBT community, our profound gratitude goes to the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, former NNPC and Total Energies for project sponsorship. Total Energies EP Nigeria Limited and its partners are sure that they will consistently champion the implementation of community sustainable projects that would impact positively on the lives of the people. Indeed. Now let's turn our attention to confirming of uh, traditional titles and prominent Nigerians, including Ijebut sons and daughters, and other well-wishers converged on the Ujudaoba Pavilion, Ijebudi, to witness the installation of a medical icon, academic and industrialist, Dr. Sonny Folon Shokuku, as the New York Beni Oja of Ijebuland. Now, the ceremony was performed by the Awujale and Paramount ruler of Ijebu land, Oba Siki Rukaldi Adetono. Anthony Gandono covered the event. And, um, of course, uh, he joins me now. Anthony, uh, tell us what's the significance of the title and, uh, of course, uh, the importance of, uh, of that title to the society and Ijebu land. 
synonymous to the Yale Ujudi Oba Festival in Ijebude, the event was well attended by dignitaries from all walks of life showcasing Ijebu culture and tradition. <laughs> Dr. Sonny Follow Shokuku became the third of Ben Yoja in the history of Ijebu land after the installation by Aujale and Paramount ruler of Ijebu land Oba Sikiru Kayode at the tunnel. Speaking on the importance of the title and the royal selection of the candidacy of Olorogun of Kuku Dynasty, Dr. Sonny Folorun Shokuku, the new Ogbenioja, prominent Nigerians, including the chairman of the new Ogbenioja Installation Committee, Dr. Fasi Yusuf, commended Aujale for the choice of Dr. Sonny Folorun Shokuku. In recent times, there were two before the current one. The current one is a master physician. Doctor, the Olorogun Doctor Sonny Kuku. So the Agbenoja, in terms of a ship transit hierarchy, is next to Awujale. So we've been together for a long time. He's a man of great and high intellect, highly intellectual, and a very brilliant character. He is the Olorogun of Ijebu. And he has brought panache, not just to Judoba, but to Jebu culture. It's a unique one. It's the one that has been longly deserved by Olorogu Tonikuku. I rejoice with him. Congratulating the new Ogbenioja, Ogun State Governor Dapo Abiodun, represented by his deputy Noimon Salako Yedele, reiterated Ogun State Government's resolve to uphold the sanctity of Yoruba tradition and culture. We are Preparatory to the official installation, the new Ogbenioja, who is also the Olorogun of Kuku Dynasty, had observed a three day traditional confirming rite at the Kuku Dynasty ancestral home in Tantebo Olorun Shogo Ijebode, where he was physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually prepared for the task ahead. This position Ogbenioja of Ijebu land has been vacant since 2015 before the confirmation of the title on Dr. Sonny Folorun Shokuku. Absolutely beautiful, rich, very rich, colorful cultural heritage, and the panache is extraordinary. And talking about the Yoruba traditional. Uh, you know, titles. Integrity is considered one of the most components of it. Now, it implies that whoever occupies the stool of the Oba is expected to pay special attention to moral values and norms, policy making, as well as policy implementation. Now, this also resonates with the character in our next report. Four years ago, precisely November 15, 2019, Chief Kasali Oladikbo Yusuf started his journey to becoming the Abese of Ubumosho land when he was conferred with the title of Abese by the late son of Ubumosho land or by Jimo Uyiwumi in a very colorful ceremony involving family, friends, and other well-wishers. The Abese of Ubumosho land, High Chief Kasali Oladipo Yusuf, received the instrument and staff of office from the governor of Oyo State, Shei Makinde. The event held at Sound Town Hall in Ubumosho. Yes, 
One of the three traditional rulers scheduled for the presentation of instruments and staff of office is Abesi of Obumosho land. The retired acting deputy controller general, Nigerian Correctional Service, I Chief Kasali Oladipo Yusuf. Others include Are Alasha of Obumosho, I Chief Joseph Oyelola Oyedele, and Bale of Yaku, Chief Ojaun Misonde Oyeniji. Governor Sheyi Makinde, represented by the State's Commissioner for Local Government and Chiefs and Sea Matters, Olusha Gonlaiwala, says the ABC of Ogbumosho land is a member of Shon's Kingmakers, while others are traditional rulers in their respective community. The lawyers too, of Bale and Yami, are the Alasa and ABC of Ogbumosho, which are recognized chief tenses under the chief lord, call for the nomination and appointment of candidates from their various ruling houses to fill the vacant too. Good way messages followed and their subjects are encouraged to rally around their rulers. Governor Mackenzie later presented instruments and staff of office to each of the three traditional rulers. <laughs> The abbess of Obumo Sholan, supported by wife, family members, friends and associates, moved to his family compound where the palace of Abese was inaugurated. This is a landmark in the history of Abese, chieftaincy home in Obumo Sholan. It is the title that his Imperial Majesty Shon of Mumashaw has the consenting power to appoint whoever from the royal home. And the process was initiated a long time ago. It has been concluded through the graciousness and magnanimity of His Excellency, Ejina Shehimakide. Almost four years now that he has been the pursuing the actualization of this day. So we are actually very happy it came. The abbess of Obumosho land, I chief Kasali Oladipo Yusuf, was installed by the late Shon of Obumosho, Obajimo Oyeumi. <laughs> and congratulations there. And we have more celebrations coming up after the commercial break. Enjoy now. Great taste, great fun. Capri Sun, the taste of fun. Helps get rid of bacteria breath. We don't like to eat better. More nutritious meals, more veggies. But we want it tasty and easy too. Hmm. No cubes. That's the secret. Made with real ingredients like chicken, parsley and garlic. And enriched with iron so your meals are better for you. And more delicious too. That's the cocoa. Let's give it some accolades. Change your world by changing what's on your plate. All right, thank you for staying with us on Newsline tonight. Now, what comes to your mind when you hear Nigerian Breweries PLC? Uh-uh, not what you think. The nation's foremost brewing company is not just known for brewing uh, beer or alcohol, but it's also known for rewarding its distributors and partners who show resilience and has also kept the company in business despite the challenging economic situation. Now, about 100 trade partners and transporters nationwide were rewarded and celebrated for their hard work at a ceremony in Lagos. And our correspondent, Diola Komiakiri, witness the distribution of prizes and she tells us more. It was an evening of celebrating success and partnerships that have produced results for the growth of the company in 2023. The best of entertainment for the relaxation and enjoyment of guests was not in short supply. Everybody. 
and in keeping with the tradition to reward and recognize its esteemed distributors who, despite the odds, weathered the storm, finding a way to navigate the curves to ensure that the products get to the last consumer. Top 100 distributors nationwide were recognized by management of Nigerian Breweries PLC. We are now more competitive than ever before. We work together as a team better than ever before. I pay tribute to Nigerians and to Nigerian breweries. I wish us lots of success in 24. These are the people that we channel our products through until it gets to the direct consumers. So because of the kind of efforts they put into our business, and so we just need to celebrate them and to tell them thank you. Among the 12 award categories were Millionaire's Award for distributors who brought a minimum of 1 to 4 million cases in the course of the year with a prize money from 1 million to 4 million naira. Our bandy category, which is 450,000, also won, you know, 65 inches television set. Chris Semwa and Sons Nigeria Limited from Benin region who has been in the business for more than 30 years, won the biggest prize of the night in the National Volume Champions category. When you walk, when you are focused, when you concentrate, definitely winning is sure. So today I've won. I'm grateful. A new product in the stout category, Legend Twist, infused three different fruity flavors, was unveiled at the award and recognition night to cater to the growing demand for premium tastes. A very new exciting product which is based on the legend stout with a twist. We have twisted it to reflect pineapple, lemon and ginger flavors and this is just going to make the market really continue to be very competitive. The pioneer and largest brewing company in Nigeria has 77 years brewing experience with quality products sustaining its position as the market leader contributing to the economy of the nation. Management of Nigerian Breweries PLC is looking forward to greater achievements in 2024. What do they say about winning? It's sweet as honey. Whenever there is a convergence of people, now there must be something amazing happening. And the love story of Umar Ladan Salihu and Amina Nasidi Babakusa commanded such convergence at the Al Hassan Tantata Mosque in Kano. Muasu Hassan captured the lovely ceremony that produced them officially as husband and wife. And the groom, Umar, is a son to former Director General of the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, Ladan Saliho. This is one of the historic mosques in Kano, built by a renowned merchant in the history of northern Nigeria, Let Al Hassan and Tata. It was the venue for the wedding solemnization of the son of the former Director General of the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria and Executive Chairman of Al Barka Radio, Ladan Saliho. After the wedding Fatiha in Kano, a colorful dinner was organized in Bauchi. <laughs> Family, friends, and well wishers have their words of advice to the couple. I think things. They have to be honest, they have to be truthful, they have to love each other. She should take the step of her uh, a mother-in-law because I know her mother-in-law as a very gentle woman who is very obedient to her husband. It's a long journey and they are just starting so I wish them all the best in their journey. Yes. You know, compassionate, considerate because without consideration marriage will not work. And they should be open-minded like whatever is happening they should discuss it. Parents to the couple pray for the success of this marriage. We'll have Umar and Amina in my prayers for them to persevere and for them to create a world of their own in which they see love, they see happiness, they see peaceful coexistence, they see procreation and they see all that there is 
uh, in the institution of marriage to... I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. I love Thank you. The groom and the bride were overwhelmed and could not hide their joy. So it's because we met a long time ago, we understood each other, rather we understand each other. So I think uh, in whatever relationship, courtship or togetherness, understanding is a vital key, it plays an important role. So um, I think that is what brought us to this day. The kind person is the love of my life and then we are wishing the couple a blessing into this practice of becoming passionate friends in their lifetime. Congratulations to the couple and of course the prayers of our parents over their children is unlimited. You're watching Newsline tonight. Another break. We'll be back. Cube is available in beef, chicken, jollof, and shrimp flavors at attractive prices of 50, 100, 200, and 500 naira. Terra Cube, or wrap joy, or leash taste. How did I get here? It all started shortly after I graduated from MSTC the Model Skills Training Center with a certificate in ICT. Close-up helps get rid of bacteria breath. All right, you're watching Newsline and the body of lead engineer Edward Amana, a former executive director of engineering in the NTA, has been laid to rest in his country home in Angba, Kogi State amidst tributes from dignitaries and people from all works of life. Omenka Amarachuku covered the funeral. The journey of life, from down to dust, and from cradle to climbers, one thing is certain, the final end to everyone's activity on earth. The announcement of the passing on of the chairman of the G team, engineer Edward Amana, created a vacuum in the NTA family a couple of weeks ago. The NTA family as an organization, his immediate family friends and associates have taken solace for the fact that he lived a fulfilled life of hard work and resilience. As he related with the various departments, you would be pardoned to think that he belonged to another directorate other than engineering. He gave a very good record of himself in the NBC. I praise and thank God for your life. Abmana was never tired to try to help to resolve any issue that had to be broadcast. Mr. about the most is his calmness, very calm person. Very selfless fellow. He never discriminated against anybody, no matter whatever creed, religion, or region that you came from. When he was our executive director, I want to tell you with all sincerity, every good infrastructure in NTA, it is a handwork. Of Edward Amana. The arrival of the remains of Edward Amana at a family compound in Angba Town was another testament to reality. Testimonies we have been hearing, everybody seems to call him Uncle Uncle. My uncle was a very charitable man, very brilliant at his profession, very kind. He is my primary school friend, secondary school, and um, to the later part of our life. He is gone. We are waiting for our turns. His days at NTA in Josh, and the history of color television in Nigeria cannot be told without it. At the funeral rites at the Sacred Heart Catholic Church, Angba was devoted to sober reflection and the call to all to please God and maintain godly love to each other. It was a touching moment at the grave site as his remains were finally committed to Mother Earth. Age 73, engineer Edward Amana, a broadcast engineer, left an indelible footprint in the structure of engineering profession in Nigeria. 
And Franklin Onyekachi also reports that family members and friends attended the burial of the matriarch of Anyefina family, Mother Teresa Anyefina of Umoduno Abaja Abatete in Idemile North local government area of Anambra State. Dominic's Catholic Church, Abaja Batete, was the venue for the funeral mass, which attracted the presence of family and friends of the deceased and officiated by the Catholic Bishop of Abad Diocese, Most Reverend Augustine Echema. The homilies admonish Christians to be mindful of the life they live, shun conflict, and have faith in God. We can only ask the members of the family to take heart and then live in the hope of the resurrection. It is very important that each and every one of us must live a good life. The first daughter of Mother Anye Fiena and former EDM NTA gave a special rendition in memory of her departed mother. Mass over, the remains of Theresa Anye Fiena were interred in her country home as the dust to dust ritual was performed. Family members, including a former chief judge of Abia State, the deceased second daughter, recounted sweet memories of their matriarch. I call her a colossus, a woman who, who could do um, almost everything perfectly and some things. A few things well, fairly. She gave it to, better, to us all and he handled us well, trained us well to be law abiding and other things. There's nobody in the Anya of my family that has a bad record. You can find mothers anywhere. What you can't find this time, you can't find my mother anywhere. I'm heartbroken, but I just have to take it. I miss her comforting words. I miss her listening ears. She will listen to every. She's very compassionate peace-loving woman, a good person. I, I could never wish for a better mother-in-law than her. She took me in as her own. pray that the family will be together and that they will be united. There are eight in number, eight children, and they all were to do well-established. They should not say, ah, oh, mom has gone, let it be ended. That is my earnest wish and prayer for this family. We pray God to console them. Let our departure bring unity and blessing and growth, holiness, faith in God. Mother Theresa Anyefiena died at the age of 91 and is survived by eight children, 19 grandchildren, seven great grandchildren, and many other relations. <laughs> And then in another report, Kate Osoma also reports that the matriarch of Okoro family in Achimbi, reigning by Tolly local government area of Imo State, Lady Victoria Chinemerem Okoro, has also been laid to rest. The burial ceremony of late Lady Victoria Chinemerem Okoro, popularly called the CDMA, offered close associates, friends, and relatives who converged at the Okoro family compound in Omagurachi. Achimbiri, the opportunity to recall the fond memories of life and times of the deceased. She's a woman that is so much involved in this, our community. I can testify and uh, she doesn't deserve to go now. But it's only God that knows the reason why. She trained me through my theological training. She gave her all to see that those around her were happy. And we pray God to grant us all eternal rest. At the funeral service held at St. Luke's Anglican Church, Archie, the priest in charge, Venerable Ferdinand M. Balise, stated that though Lady Victoria Kuru spent most of her lifetime in Abuja, she contributed immensely to God's work in her home church, an effort that stood her out. He calls on the living to serve God with their resources as they do not know when eternity will come calling. The Bishop of Uwere Anglican Diocese, Right Reverend Chuko Mopra, offered special prayers for the bereaved family. The body of late Victoria Ukuru was later interred in her husband's compound after graveside rites. The husband, Sir Charles Ukuru, Children and others say she has left lasting legacies. 
it's a pity she's gone, unfortunately. But I take solace in the fact that she lived a good life. I will try to endure it, keep the legacy, and stay for the children the best I can. In Jesus' name. She sponsored so many people to go to school. She trained the first priest for our community at Achi. She helped a, a lot of people, especially women. She helped to empower women, helped them to build successful businesses. She left a mark everywhere she went, and she was an incredible builder. Everything she touched turned to gold. That's just my mom, right? So it comes full circle. And as much as we miss her, I, I think there's reason to celebrate her every day. I pray that the children will grow old. Aged 69, Lady Victoria Chine Merimukuru, who was a member of the Knights and Ladies of St. Christopher, started her life career as a mathematics teacher and later became a lawyer. She also championed community development. <laughs> And may the soul of all the departed rest in peace. And we have just enough time to say thank you for watching Newsnight tonight. From me and the rest of the production crew, have a good night. Rest. Bye-bye. <laughs>